Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to test or check the heating element on an electric water heater. If you notice that you're running out of hot water a lot faster than you used to, you have no hot water at all, or the water became scorching hot and then tripped the circuit breaker, then checking the heating elements on your water heater is a great place to start. All you will need to do this is a Phillips screwdriver and some kind of a multimeter that can check resistance. But before we go ahead and start opening up our water heater, first things first, we need to turn off the power at the breaker panel. If you are fortunate like me, your circuit breakers will be labeled like mine is right over here. If you're not so fortunate and your circuit breakers are not labeled, then what you are looking for is a bigger breaker. Electrical water heaters, they're gonna have a two pole breaker. So these bigger ones where two of them are combined. And luckily on most breaker panels, there's not very many of them. So your options are either to turn them off one at a time, like this is my water heater, I know that. But if you didn't know, you would have to turn them off one at a time and then go check at the water heater to see if that's the one. Or you could simply turn all the big ones off and then you know for sure that the power will be off. Another good thing to check is your multimeter to see if it's working good, especially if you haven't used it for a long time. It's good to check to make sure that it's actually working properly. So the first thing I like to check is the leads themselves to make sure that the wires inside are not broken or somehow defective. The easiest way to do so is to set your meter to continuity. Most meters will have the continuity feature, this sonar looking thing. And then all you have to do is simply touch your meter leads together. If you hear a beep, that means the leads are good. If you're not hearing a beep when you touch it, that means they're bad and you need to replace the leads. If you don't have this continuity feature, you can also check the leads by using the ohm setting or the resistance setting right here. And when you're checking resistance, the leads basically just should not be OL. OL means open line or open circuit, and that's bad. So when you touch your two leads, you should get some kind of a read. And the resistance between the two leads is super small, it's like, 0.005 that's why all we're seeing is the zero but as long as it's not ol or your starting read you know that the leads are good next thing to check is to make sure that your meter is reading voltage properly it's going to be either labeled as a v or it'll say acv for alternating current voltage so let's set my meter there in my case it's very easy because my meter auto selects the ranges for both the voltage and for the resistance readings. And all I have to do to check if my meter is reading proper voltage is simply stick my meter leads into an outlet. And I should get around 120 volts, which I'm getting. And by the way, when you're measuring AC voltage, it does not matter which lead goes where, there is no polarity with alternating current. So I just swapped the leads and as you can see we're still getting 119 volts. So now we know that my leads are good and this thing is measuring voltage properly. We can safely proceed. Okay we're back at the water heater, the power is off, all the elements and the thermostats are going to be behind these panels right here. Your water heater might just have one element or it has two elements. On my water heater I have two of them but some water heaters will only have one. So I have the upper element and the lower element. I'm going to go ahead and take both of these panels off and we're going to be able to see what's inside. Once you have the cover off and you pulled the insulation out, the first thing you see is a little cover that covers your element, which is this guy right over here, and your upper thermostat. This cover does need to come off, so just gently tug on it and it should come off just like that. In this video, I'm only going to be showing you how to test the heating element, but if you're interested about how an electric water heater works, I have a separate video where I talk about the whole electric water heater and how it all works, the thermostats and everything. And let's go ahead and open up the bottom one as well. And even though we have the power off, it's always a good idea to double check and make sure that it's actually off. And to do that, we do need to check it up on top. On electric water heaters, the power always comes in from the top and it goes to the first two screws up on top. So if I go to voltage and put my two leads on both of these screws, I should be getting zero volts if I have no power here. 
and I am getting zero, so I know that my power is off. Now that I verified that the power is off, I can proceed to check the resistance on my heating element. To do so, simply loosen the screws holding the wires in and pull those wires out. Some people say that you can check it without taking the wires off, but that can give you a false reading. The right way to check resistance is to take these wires off and then check the element or whatever load that you're checking. When you're testing the heating element, you do not need to drain the water heater. If the element is bad, it doesn't matter if the water heater is drained or not. You should be able to tell with a meter, you're gonna have some really funky reading or it's gonna read OL or some super high reading and it'll be pretty obvious when you're checking if the element is bad. So I set my meter to ohms, resistance, this little horseshoe symbol. And I'm gonna put my leads, one lead on each screw. And once again, it doesn't matter which side the red and black goes on. And what we're looking for here is a reading that is anywhere between 12 and 20. That is the average read and different water heaters will have different elements. Typically larger water heaters are gonna have larger elements, which are also gonna have a larger read. So your elements could read 12, maybe 16. Some of them will read 20 or even 28. The most common is 12, which is what we're seeing here. 12, 16, and 18 are the common ones. The ones that go over 20, those are pretty rare. But basically, if you're getting a read anywhere from 10 to 30, in that range, most likely your heating element is good. If it's something that is way lower, let's say it's a two or a three, or it's 700, then you know that something's wrong and most likely your heating element needs to get replaced. After you check the resistance, make sure you put the wires back in the same way you found them and tighten them down nice and snug. You don't wanna have a loose connection. Make sure you do tighten it down pretty good. Loose connections equal heat and that could start to melt the wires here if you just put them on there loosely. So make sure you have them secured nice and tight. Let's go ahead and check the lower element as well and see what read we get here. And my water heater is actually working fine so I should be getting a good read on both of them. And since they're the same wattage, the lower and upper element, I should also get somewhere around 12 ohms on this one as well. And there it is, we got 12.6 ohms. And when you're checking resistance, make sure that your leads are on there really nice and securely. They're making a nice connection. If you have a loose connection, you might get some kind of a false reading. So if your reading is really goofy, like you're getting two ohms or 500, then I would try to reposition the leads or maybe even swap them and stab them somewhere else. Make sure your connection is good when you're checking. That way you're gonna get the true reading. So both of my elements are good. If you checked your elements and you were getting OL, for example, if I have both of my leads stabbed in here and I'm getting OL like this, that means the element is burned out and it's probably broken somewhere in the middle of it. If you have the opportunity, if one of your elements is bad with water heaters, it's nice to replace things as a pair. So if you're gonna be replacing one of the elements, it would be good to just go ahead and replace both of them, the upper and the lower element. Same goes with the thermostats. If you check both of your elements and they're good, yet your water heater is still having issues, the first thing I would check is the temperature set points. The upper thermostat and the lower thermostats, they have temperature settings right here that you can adjust. So if your water is not hot enough, then perhaps try increasing the temperature. Or if the water is getting too hot, then try lowering it on the bottom thermostat and on the upper thermostat. I have a video on how to adjust temperatures on electric water heaters, so if you want more information, check that video out. In fact, I have a whole water heater playlist with a lot of different water heater videos, how to replace the pressure relief valve, how to replace the anode rod, how a gas water heater works, and etc. I'm gonna go ahead and put that playlist in the video description. So if you want more information on water heaters, you can check that playlist out too. So if you check both of your elements and they're both good, somewhere between 12 and 20 ohms, if you have a larger water heater than perhaps 28, if they're both good and you tried adjusting the temperature settings on your thermostats, yet your water heater is still doing goofy things, you're not having enough hot water or the water is getting too hot, 
then the next thing I would try replacing is the thermostats. These things, it's recommended to replace as a pair. So the elements, you could replace them one at a time, but with the thermostats, it's recommended to go ahead and replace both of them at the same time. And hopefully that will solve your hot water heater problems. Well guys, and that's all I had for you today. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any other questions about the elements or about water heaters, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Recently I was offered a job where they paid in vegetables. I turned it down. The celery was just unacceptable. Brief ending interruption to show you how this T-Rex is trying to bite my finger off. Look at this dude. Ah, that actually kind of hurts. <laughs> dude, ah. <laughs> he's, he's not letting go. <laughs> Anyway, dear optimist, pessimist, and realist, while you were arguing about the cup being half full, I drank it. Sincerely, the opportunist.